This is the Razer Kitsune and it's probably the most important controller to release this generation and we're gonna have a look at it right now. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Razer has sent this to me for the purposes of making this review. It is the all new Kitsune all button optical arcade controller. And the reason it is so important is that this is the people's controller. This is the one that you will see the most. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's not exactly like Razer is the only controller company out there, but this all button layout that you see here is surprisingly uncommon when it comes to officially licensed products. So coming in at a reasonable price with this gorgeous design and Razer Chroma RGB lighting, I'm really excited to get it straight out the box and see just how well this optical arcade controller performs. Just give you a good look at the front of the packaging and on the back of the box you can see a little break out of the model. I haven't heard about whether there's going to be a custom plexiglass provided by Razer, but hopefully there will be because Razer is also making special editions of this controller. But if it's anything like the Razer Pantera Evo, which I have also reviewed in a previous video, hopefully they will come out with a plexiglass option that we can actually have interchangeable art for. Just going to slice these tabs here on the side, shake out of the box like an iPad. In fact, I think the box is the same size as an iPad. It's a lot smaller than I was expecting. And there it is, just like, oh man, I'm so happy. I was really happy when the Razer Ryon opened and it was like right there, you know, you see the product as soon as you open it. And just like that, the Kitsune, the first thing you see when you open the box is the product itself. You're gonna feel so much pride opening the box because it's got that classic, let's see if it actually makes the sound. Sort of. It's time to test these optical arcade buttons. Oh. They look so much like arcade style buttons, I was expecting them to just feel like standard sun was. They have a really nice feel. It's not clicky, but it's not just a straight sun well, like you just throw the button down really lightly. It has a little bit of resistance, but for some reason it feels a little bit tactile, like it's clicking somewhere along it. You can even hear it. Like it sounds like it's clicking, right? All of this and we haven't even got it out of the box yet. Let's pull it using this tab to lift it out of the packaging. Oh, sleek. <laughs> it's so thin. What? It does not look like this on the images that I saw on the internet. I knew that it was going to be slimmer than a lot of the options I've seen out there, but that is insanely thin. Like there's a lot more surface area on the front of this controller. So I thought in keeping with that, there would also be like a lot more, I don't know, a girth to it. I thought there would be a lot more thickness to it. Now being this thin is not just a marvel of engineering. It also just makes it easier to use, especially for people who play on a desk. And if you've got a thick controller, that means you have to raise it up and then you've got your hand at this really terrible position. So I'm just a little bit obsessed with these buttons. <laughs> Maybe there are silencer pads underneath. It even sounds like it's clicking a little bit just when I tap it and don't go all the way down. Razer low profile linear optical switches for ultra precise, ultra responsive inputs. Now I have many opinions when it comes to proprietary buttons and proprietary switches, but we'll go into that in the full review. What I just want to do right now is just get a full experience of the controller out of the box. Unbelievable. Razer knows exactly what I want. It's almost like they built this controller just for me. But as you can see, it has my favorite feature of any controller. It has non-slip padding all over the bottom. That already makes it controller of the year. But we already have a controller of the year. Now you can see that it's already got all the main features that you need. The all button layout, which is basically a D-pad with all the directions separated into left, down, right, and jump. And there's many specific reasons why that really helps to have a layout like this in fighting games. You have your eight main action buttons here on the right side, and of course a touchpad because it is a PS5 controller. But what's really surprising me right now is how muted a design it is. This is really, really held back compared to a lot of other stuff that you get from from Razer, which is just like green lights or blue lights, or just lights everywhere. And yes, this does have the light show as well, but the design itself, when the lights are off, look at this, look at this matte black, it completely, I, I just turn an angle away, it just completely vanishes. It's almost like negative space. Let's check out what else is in the box, small instruction manual, new Razer sticker. It's funny how they keep changing the color of the snake logo. And we have the gorgeous braided cable that comes with it. One, two, 
to... It's a three to four meter cable. Importantly, it is USB-A. On one side, you'll be plugging this into your PS5 at tournaments, and on the other side, you have USB-C. This is the side that you'll be plugging into the controller. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. It's not just a normal USB-C port straight out here. It's actually got a locking port. If I click on this like that, and it, <laughs> it just pops right open. It's ready to receive. I can then plug the USB-C cable in like so. Just close it and lock it in place. The USB cable's not coming out by accident in the middle of a tournament when I rage and I throw my controller on the floor. When I rage and throw my controller on the floor, I want it to take the PlayStation 5 with it. Actually, that won't happen because it's not locking on the other side. But more importantly than how it actually feels to play, you want to see one thing and that's RGB. So, let's plug it in. There it is! That is so sick. You can imagine this thing flying completely under the radar. being undetected by anyone except for people who are looking out for RGB lighting. This is the most stealth thing I have ever seen come out of Razer and they've actually got a lot of products called stealth. Look at the way this thing disappears. There is no light. Welcome to the void. Now being a Razer product with the word chroma on it, I'm absolutely certain that there are different color modes. This is quite subtle. It does go all the way around. There's only one part where there is no color and it's obviously where the USB cable, there has to be somewhere for this cable to plug in. This is getting ridiculous. I haven't even plugged it in. I'm already getting really excited. So it's time to try it out with some real fighting games. It's the Razer Kitsune. All right, I've got Street Fighter VI booted up here on the PS5 and feast your eyes on the Razer Kitsune optical arcade controller with the all button layout. This is actually officially licensed. So when I press the PS button right here, I should be able to jump straight into the game. And as you can see, no issues. And just to give you a close up of the PlayStation specific features, you've got options and the share button right here, touchpad all off to the side so you don't accidentally press them. You've got the home button and quick access to L3 and R3. If you really wanted to, you might even be able to use these in matches because in Street Fighter 6, you can set these buttons to shortcuts and Really importantly, for anything that's going to be used in an eSports context, we have a tournament lock switch right here. And as you can see, it is in the unlocked position right now. But if I click the switch down, we'll be in tournament lock mode. Can just show you that the home button is doing nothing. But if I turn the tournament lock switch off and I press the home button, it will go over to the home menu. Now, of course, I can't wait to test how it performs in game. But I think even more importantly than that, we need to turn off a few of these lights and let's just see how it looks in the dark, because check this out. One, two. Oh, it's just, it's just too good. Look at how that glow spills around the edges onto your desk. If you have a white desk or a light colored desk like mine, then you will be able to enjoy all of that RGB, Razer, Chroma glow all around the edges as it phases through those different colors. Honestly, I don't even usually play on my desk. I usually have it on my lap, but I think with a controller like this, I almost want to play on my desk more just so I can enjoy the light show. If you're looking for an accessory that's gonna make your desk look even more gamer with the RGB lighting, but in a subtle, cool way, then this controller is already way up there. Super compact, so it takes up very little space on your desk, but it's just big enough so it's got space for all of the buttons and also for me to rest my palms if I want to when I'm resting. But it's best if you don't rest your palms there while playing all the time. It's best if you hover your hands or if you rest them lightly on the buttons. As you can see, even when the lights are on, the RGB is bright enough that you can see it. It's just that you don't really see that glowing effect. But when you're at local events or tournaments, don't worry, your friends will see the RGB lighting. Even in bright light, you can see these lights from far away. I just can't get over how nice this feels. They have a very quiet sound. I don't know how to explain it. It's really, really smooth, but it has that feel of a slight click. Press left, right, down, up, and interestingly enough, it is using the SOCD rules from Capcom Pro Tour. And if you're not aware of what that is, in order to be tournament legal, when you press down and up, you must go into neutral. In old versions of all button layouts, if you press down and up, you would get up. If you are used to something like a gaming keyboard, you'll have these shapes, you know, these like scallops so that your fingers can like rest inside the keys. But this is not like that. This is more like a traditional arcade button, the way that arcade buttons have been in game arcades for decades. This is using convex style buttons. And so that's something that I'm not used to, but it feels great, obviously, because you know all arcade controllers have been like that for decades. Having no issues with the inputs, able to do all the moves as usual. And really importantly, in terms of comfort, the buttons don't hurt to press. Some controllers, have a very 
hard metal construction. And I do believe that maybe the top of this controller is aluminium. That's not really what's taking the impact of the button. Whatever the PCB is underneath here, it is absorbing the impact quite well. So I'm not feeling a huge amount of pain. I'm not, well, not feeling any pain at all while pressing the buttons, which is really important because you're gonna be playing on these things for hours on end. Something I'm really noticing immediately is how easy it is to get to the touchpad right above my hand over here. I can be doing my combos and when I want to reset the stage, I just jump straight over here. It's just tap, tap, tap. And I fluff up my combo and I'm like, oh, that didn't quite work. I'll just reset the stage, just try again. Oh, it didn't really work. Okay, let's just do a super. Okay, didn't want to see that. It is a little bit strange going to the options menu because that is also here on the left side. If you're a PlayStation person, you are kind of new to fighting games in general, you might be like, why is the options button on the left? Honestly, it's just much safer having it over there. But of course, if you are afraid of pressing the buttons at all, just make sure you've got the tournament lock switch on and then the options button should do nothing. So I've said it that L3 and R3 will do three punches or three kicks. And as you can see, it is close enough that I could be in the middle of a combo, I could just slide my finger over and press L3 or R3. It would be difficult to know which one I'm pressing and I might accidentally press the home button. But let's just see if I can put it in tournament lock mode and see what happens to these buttons. Interesting. Okay, so tournament lock mode actually prevents you from pressing L3 and R3. So you'd have to switch them off and in that case, you'd have access to these buttons for, you know, pressing other various shortcuts, but then the chances of pressing this button is very, very high. So I really wish that the home button had been somewhere else so that we could have access to this, but they could do a firmware update if we really ask them in the future. We'd be like, could you have a firmware update where L3 and R3 are available even in tournament lock switch mode? Now that Rave Reserve is hopefully watching this video, maybe they'll change it for us. So not having any issues pressing multiple buttons at the same time. If I do EX moves, I need to press three buttons at the same time or two buttons at the same time. Or if I'm doing these Ken moves where two kicks turns other moves into fiery punches instead like that that's no issue whatsoever double tapping if you're lazy like i am and you don't like to time things properly you can take advantage of the input buffer and just double tap things now one thing i should probably point out about the layout on this controller is that it is much closer to the action button layout that you'll find on Vulix arcade machines. If you come from a Tekken background or various other all button controllers, you'll notice that a large number of them usually have the buttons go up for these two and then they come back down again so that your hands kind of rest like this and then the buttons just fall underneath each finger. But because it uses more of a Vulix layout, it's kind of assumed that your arms are coming in more at this angle instead of this angle. And if they are coming in at this angle, then they, of course, they do rest right on these buttons. And as you can see, I'm having Having no issue resting my fingers on all of these buttons and having my thumb on the jump button. There is, there can be some issues with this layout where sometimes if you move your hand all the way up here, like your thumb ends up too far away from the jump button. But as you can see, I'm not having any issues in the Vuex layout and resting my fingers on all of the buttons necessary. If you're completely new to fighting games, you might be wondering why I'm using my right hand to do the jump actions in general. But actually, when you think of most games like Mario or Sonic, people use their right thumb on the buttons to jump. In fighting games for decades, we've always used our left hand only for left, down, right, and jump. And you can still do that on this controller. That's one of the main flexibilities of this all button layout with the thumb jump in the middle. But the main takeaway is that this is a Vulix layout. It is not the noir style layout. All right, I've got the Kitsune on my lap now and I much prefer this position because I've got much more flexibility with my arms. I don't have to have my arms forward like I'm in some racing seat. And with a controller this slim, you really don't have to worry about having your hands bent at a really bizarre angle like this. They're just down here, relaxed. I should also mention that when you put your fingers on these buttons, they don't accidentally actuate. A lot of people have trouble with like Sanwa buttons, which are the standard buttons in arcades, but when they rest their fingers on the buttons, like they actuate the buttons by accident. But as you can see, I can be lightly tapping on these buttons like so, and it's not actuating any commands in the game. You actually have to press the button, otherwise, you know, it, nothing will happen. You can rest them lightly and you'll be perfectly safe. On some controllers, the buttons are so close together that when you double tap them, you end up accidentally pressing the buttons below them as well. But I can just show you a nice close up. You can see there's plenty of space right here for me to double tap buttons without accidentally pressing other buttons. If the con if these buttons are a little bit too close together and then you'll like double tap like this and then you kind of graze, graze the edges of the other buttons. Like I don't want to press that circle button by accident. 
but if they're too close together, I'll end up pressing both. But the spacing they have chosen is great because you can do double tapping things. And even if you are doing techniques like holding forward and then double tapping the back button so that you can get really fast dashes, like you can do that double tapping, no problem. And of course, like I mentioned before, because it does have non-slip padding all over the bottom, I'm having no issues with it sliding off my La all right, that's pretty much all I have time for with the Razer Kitsune today. Remember, it's day one, just got it out the box, and I am desperately, desperately trying to find faults with it, but not, find <laughs> not finding anything to really dislike about it so far. It's ultra slim, so my wrists aren't at an awkward position. The button layout is nice. I love these buttons. They're silent, but they're slightly clicky, and they've got enough sort of bounciness to them that it reminds me of those Razer Pentera Evo buttons that I loved so much. Compared to the competition, this is $100 less than the only other official controller that you can buy that's all button layout like this. If you're looking for a controller that gives you that extra peace of mind and obviously an officially licensed product is going to be significantly better in that regard, but honestly, I'm blown away at how it comes in at almost the same price as the unofficial options. And don't forget the most important thing is that this is by Razer, a giant in the world of gaming accessories. And I'm not saying that because I think like, oh, they're such a big company that you should buy everything from them. I'm saying that because they have distribution. This is the controller that everyone will have, not just because it's the best one or the one that everybody likes the most, but it's because it'll probably be one of the few controllers you can actually get your hands on. A lot of the other companies are independent. They're building them as fast as they possibly can, but they're always out of stock because the controllers are so popular. Razer has distribution. They have ties with retail shops. They put their controllers in stores, on shelves, and they have them in stock. Hopefully this video doesn't do too well and people don't know about it so that it uh, stays under the radar so it's always in stock and you can buy it. If there's one thing I'm not 100% sure about, it's the availability of these buttons if they are to break. I really hope that they put these buttons for sale separately so that you can buy spares. So even if they break in the middle of a tournament, you can just swap them out and put a new one in without having to go to some retail shop and buy a brand new Kitsune just so that you can get the extra buttons. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Be sure to check out this video next if you're interested in all button controllers. I've got plenty of options and reviews for you to check out on the rest of the channel. I have got nothing else to say. All I really want to do is do this again where I have, like, you just look at the lights and then it just, the lights disappear and it's just black out.